for lab three, right, we're looking at the histology of connective tissues, and it's got a little instructions here. And what you should ideally do is draw some of these samples that you see right here and label everything within here, right? So all these are what is gonna be on the practical, right? So the better, more familiar you are with them, then the better you'll do on the practical. Here, we're gonna start with this chapter skin. We're looking, this is the sample we're looking for, and we want to find these structures over here, right? We're gonna to go to the slide box. And I said it was in chapter 11. I use the skin a lot, because it's got a lot of good samples that I like to use. And plus, then you'll be familiar with it come time for when we learn out the skin. You'll be 75% there. All right, so I'm going to go on this slice, this MH77 to 78 that's on your lab three right here. The papillary layer is what's going to give you this areolar or loose connective tissue. Right? So you could, if you want, click right in on it since it's, it is right there. So if I click on it, it's going to go to something like this, right? And we're trying to identify loose connective tissue. To do that, you're going to want to first distinguish the epithelial layer from the connective tissue layer. Right? And we said epithelial layer, the characteristic is it's tightly bound groups of cells. And with this sample, you could make the whole cell out if you look closely. Right, so this cell is connected to this cell. Mostly in a lot of these samples, you'll only be able to see the nucleus, right? That's what's showing up here, the nucleus. So it looks like there's a little space in between the cells, but the cell membranes are actually touching if you look closely, right? So this, because of that cellularity, you've got to be looking at epithelial, right? And because it's a stratified layer, and you know it's going to be stratified squamous, in this class because I'm not going to ask you about anything else. All right, so this must be some kind of stratified squamous. Um, and the top layer here looks like dead cells, characteristics of stratified squamous keratinized, right? So this is epithelial. And then we'll go back to clicking on the this. And it doesn't really give you like, okay, this is something, and this is something different, obviously. Where is the areolar tissue? So with these samples, first off, epithelial, this down here, hopefully soon to you will not be, will be obvious that it's not epithelial tissue. Okay? So you see a cell here, cell here, cell here, cell here. These cells are widely spaced apart. You have a lot of stuff, junk in between them. This must be connective tissue. Okay, so these are the actual nuclei, these dark purple dots of the cells, right? So if I ask you what tissue this is, you're going to say stratified squamous epithelia keratinized. If I ask you what tissue this is, well, you don't know what it is yet but it's some kind of connective tissue, right? Because remember the membrane, epithelial, and then loose connective tissue. So what type of tissue is this? Hey, how about that? Loose connective tissue, right? And you could just tell that by location. Right? Even if you were like, I don't know what this is. Wait a second, is this still loose connective tissue? Well, it depends on what I ask you, right? If I say, if I have a little line right here saying what's this versus this, and one of your options is loose connective tissue. You should guess that, right? Because sitting underneath the epithelial is going to be loose connective tissue. So if this is loose connective tissue, what kind of cells are these right here? Fibroblast. Fibroblast. Why? Because they're always fibroblasts in connective tissue. That's the only cell that I'm going to ask you to identify in connective tissue proper. What's the significance of fibroblasts? Like, what do they do? What they do is make the matrix. They produce 
collagen, they produce elastin. So they're basically make, they produce the, the substances that create the ground substance, like those proteoglycans and stuff. So these guys are just sitting there spitting out collagen and elastin and whatever. They produce the matrix. That's okay. their function. You know, you'll go to the lecture, you'll see there are some other cell types in here, but you can't really recognize them in any of the samples that we have. So if I'm asking you what the cell is, your answer is fibroblast, okay? That's, that's the correct answer. That's the cell, no, tissue. I'm sorry, this is the tissue, stratified squamous, dry. This is the, this is the tissue, loose connective tissue or areolar tissue. What's the cell type? It's fibroblast. What's this, what are these fibers right here? Collagen. Collagen. How do you know that? Because in any of these samples right here, this dark purple stuff, I mean, the darker red stuff here is the epithelial lining, right? That's your epidermis right here, stratified squamous keratinized epithelium. Let's see, this down here. But you can barely see, uh, these are adipose cells. These are fat cells down here. Everything in between is going to be some kind of fibrous connective tissue, right? Dermis, dense irregular connective tissue, or papillary layer. It's not calling it loose connective tissue, but that's what it is. And if we see the main protein in these tissues that you could see on any slide is collagen, right? So in loose connective tissue, it's taking like a single strand sort of look. Right? So if we look here, kind of find a good sample. I think this one's good. This might be one of the other ones I use. I think. Here again, here's that epithelial layer. You can tell the different color even from far off. And then this is the, these are all the individual cells. And then you see how this is kind of like over all these, these are all the fibroblasts. You see how like the strands are kind of like a single kind of strand. And then as you go deeper, those become bundled up, right? So this is all collagen, but the arrangement between the two is a little different. This is a looser arrangement. There's fewer of them and they're not in bundles. So this is dense, irregular connective tissue. These are all like blood vessels. These are like hair cells and stuff like that. So there's a bunch of junk going on here. But if I ask you what fiber these are, you're going to say what? Collagen. Collagen. You only have two choices, elastin or fiber, unless you're looking at particular tissue. I just want to make sure I'm getting this right. Is the like pink strips, is that the actual collagen? Yeah. Or is that the, okay. That's the actual collagen. You can't see the ground substance, remember. So only thing you can see are the cell nuclei and these, these strands, right? They become more obvious in the dense irregular connective tissue because these are big bundles of collagen fibers, whereas these are like single strand. Mm -hmm. Okay. The way I put it in the videos, think of like, these are kind of like fine hair, right, kind of spread out, whereas these are like a ponytail, basically. That's basically what you're looking at, at the difference between. Them. What does the irregular part mean? Like you said, it's dense. Yeah, so you see how these, like you got a, this is a cut through the skin, right, the side view. You see how this is a long, uh, a long, like a sideways cut? Mm -hmm. Whereas this chunk right here, all these might be coming from the other direction. So this and this might be running perpendicular to each other. So they're, the collagen bundles are arranged in various directions. That's what irregular means. So what you actually want to compare um, dense irregular, irregular connective tissue 
is dense regular connective tissue. So in this case, again, this is a tendon, right? This is all collagen fibers. And you see the difference in how these bundles? Yes, yeah. Nice and clean, right? Nice and clean, dirty. No, no, they're not dirty, but you know, very regular. This in the case of regular, they're all in parallel with each other. Mm. In the case of irregular, it looks like this crap right here. Right? So here's your dense regular, all kind of arranged in regular fibers. Whereas these, since they're going in different directions, they're gonna like, you know, some of them are gonna be like cross section, some of them are gonna be longitudinal section, All right? And so what that's doing is all these are arranged in this way. So if you pull on a tendon, it's like, you know, super, super strong, but all your muscles and ligaments, I mean, tendons and ligaments, right? Are usually experiencing a particular line of force. Whereas your dense irregular, is gonna be kind of surrounding the organ in the capsule and be experiencing like uh, stress in many different directions. And because it's arranged in all these different directions, it's gonna be able to face it in all those directions. Not quite as strong as this, but it's multi, it's resisting it from different directions. Okay, the last things I wanted to mention here, just as an addendum here, remember that you're trying to, uh, identify the tissue and some of the fibers within it and maybe some of the cells. And for this one, we already just talked about the collagen fiber and the fibroblasts, uh, but I wanna mention the elastic fibers. And in this case, we're gonna look at that slide that is prepared to stain elastic fibers. With this stain, the areolar tissue becomes more distinct here. And you can see this layer of here, these fibers stretching out right here, these thin black fibers, these are the elastic fibers. So that's one sample of the elastic fibers. And in this case, they're all stained black, right? As opposed to the red fibers here, these black ones are the elastic fibers. And these could also be, you'll notice they're branched up here, but they usually form these single strands like this. Okay, so these are elastic fibers. One of the other tissues, one of the other loose connective tissues is this reticular tissue. And here we're just asking you to identify the reticular fibers. Okay, so we'll go to the spleen one. And we'll zoom in. So in this sample, See, this is of the spleen right here. The reticular fibers are forming a framework around the cells that are actually doing the work in the spleen. They form this kind of webby, networky looking bunch of fibers here, right? So not quite as long as the elastic fibers and just get used to looking at this slide here and you'll be able to recognize this as reticular tissue and those are reticular fibers. And then the last one here is this adipose tissue. And I want you to label the tissues or one of the other cells besides fibroblasts that you might be asked to identify adipose sites. Okay, so we're gonna to go to this MH90 slide and look over here. So again, this dark purple layer up here is the epithelial layer. You could see the layer of the top layer of the skin here. That's those dead cells that are flaking off right here. And then underneath the dark purple from here, all the way down to here is connective tissue. And then once you get over here, you see this sort of wide spacing cells right here. This is the adipocytes. This is the adipose tissue. And these are the adipocytes. So for these, all you're gonna be able to see are the nuclei right here in a big fat cell membrane. I mean, mostly actually the lipid that was in there has been removed during the preparation process. So this nuclei belongs to an adipocyte. 
then this whole layer right here is adipose tissue.